Throughout this section, we'll be looking at several things that influence yaw, trim, and stability. And uh, so we'll, we'll be looking at these in components and then adding them all together to get the complete yaw stability derivative or, or to be able to trim in yaw by adding all these, uh, the influences of all these components together. We're going to start with the influence of the vertical tail because that's the component that influences this the most. And uh, so let's just draw a, a schematic of this aircraft looking down on it. So we've got our center of gravity, and then this is looking down on the vertical tail. And, and, uh, and then we've got what's called a rudder deflection. The, the aft portion of that vertical tail can deflect usually, and that's called the rudder. And um, now we've got, uh, this is our uh, fuselage reference line through the, through the center of the aircraft. And V infinity is coming in now at some side slip angle beta. Okay, so uh, remember Y is out the, uh, the right side of the aircraft and X is out the nose of the aircraft. And um, so now we can look at the forces and moments generated by this or the vertical tail on the center of gravity. So if if uh, if the uh, if the uh, vertical tail is at some angle of attack here, it's a side slip angle, but it's some angle relative to the the cord line of that tail, then that will create lift. We're going to call it lift on the vertical and drag on the vertical, and it can also create a moment, and I'm gonna use a little M here because I actually do mean a pitching moment about the aerodynamic center of that wing, which is now placed vertically. Okay, so those are the forces and moments um, acting on that wing, and those are acting at a distance of LV behind the center of gravity. Now, there's one thing uh, that may not be obvious here that we need to discuss, and that's the existence of something called sidewash. So just like uh, downwash, when we looked at the, the horizontal tail, for example, in the presence of a main wing, uh, we can have some sidewash. And we'll talk about sidewash in more detail later, but uh, we're going to define that sidewash as positive going left to right. Okay, so V infinity was coming in at this angle, but it gets rotated by some uh, epsilon s. Uh, so this is V infinity. It gets rotated by some sidewash angle, epsilon s, and, uh, and it's positive from left to right, okay? And uh, we're going to say that that epsilon s can be written as epsilon s naught when there's no beta plus a change in epsilon s with beta times beta. So just like we did with downwash and as a function of angle of attack, we're gonna have a sidewash as a function of side slip angle. Okay, so I think we have all of our components here. Um, using a small angle approximation uh, for both um, for beta and uh, the sidewash angle, we can now write the the yawing moment, we can develop an equation for the yawing moment uh, produced by these forces and moments on the horizontal or the vertical tail about the center of gravity. So what that would look like is uh, the yawing moment, and I'm going to put that in parentheses uh, about, so that means the yawing moment at the center of gravity due to the vertical tail, and that's going to be equal to the dynamic pressure at the vertical tail, which is one half rho V, I'm going to subscript with V squared. That's the dynamic pressure at the vertical tail times the area of the vertical tail uh, times the length to the vertical tail times the, uh, the lift on that vertical tail, which we're going to actually say is LV comma alpha. So it's the lift slope of the vertical tail times its angle of attack in the vertical direction, which is going to be beta minus the downwash uh, angle epsilon s, and then there's some influence of the rudder, so a, a change in lift due to rudder deflection, which we'll call that epsilon r times uh, delta r, the rudder deflection. Okay, so that's the lift um, on the uh, uh, on the vertical tail, and then we've also got a pitching moment. Um, we're going to neglect drag because uh, from the small angle approximation that uh, drops away. 
And so then we, we just have the pitching moment effect about the center of gravity, which is going to be uh, C bar V times the pitching moment, uh, the coefficient of pitching moment um, on the vertical tail, uh, or the change in that with respect to rudder times delta R. Now, the reason, um, uh, so, so most of the time, uh, this vertical tail is a symmetric airfoil. And so we are going to drop out, uh, you know, I guess there could be some camber in here before the deflection. And if that was the case, then you'd have an extra term here for the pitching moment at zero delta R. But, uh, but for most vertical tails that are up at 90 degrees, this is a symmetric airfoil. And so we're going to drop that term and just say that the, this pitching moment is a function only of uh, the, the rudder deflection. It's linearly proportional to the rudder deflection. Okay, so uh, we can now non-dimensionalize this the way that we would any uh, force or moment on the entire aircraft. We would divide this by one half rho v infinity squared times the area of the mean wing times uh, bw. That's how we're going to get the yawing moment coefficient about the center of gravity is by using these aircraft properties sw, bw, and v infinity. So let's... Um, so the yawing moment coefficient at the center of gravity uh, due to the vertical tail uh, is now equal to the ratio. First, let's, uh, the first term here is the ratio of the dynamic pressures, the free stream dynamic pressure compared to the dynamic pressure seen on that vertical tail, which again could be different if that vertical tail is in prop wash or, um, uh, or some other effect. So um, anyway, those can be different, so we're going to call that uh, eta sub v. That's the efficiency. Um, and then we've got uh, S, V, and I'm going to, uh, this term here, I'm going to pull this LV out front and divide this term by LV later, okay? So we've got S, V times, uh, times LV over uh, S, W times B, W. And uh, this term is actually called the vertical tail volume ratio. So this is the tail volume ratio. And uh, this is very similar to the horizontal tail volume ratio that we discussed when we developed similar equations uh, for the longitudinal stability. So now we can, uh, we can put in the rest of our terms here. We're going to have CL V comma alpha. And I'm going to write this as everything multiplied by beta, which is one minus epsilon s comma beta times beta. And then we have some term here that uh, is not proportional to beta or delta r, and that's uh, the CLV alpha times epsilon s naught. So that's my downwash um, at zero beta. And then I'm gonna put everything uh, that's proportional to delta r uh, in this equation, in this last term here. And uh, that is epsilon r times cl v alpha minus cv bar over lv times cm v comma delta r. And that's all multiplied by delta r. Okay, so uh, what we've done here is, is uh, put all the terms together that are multiplied by beta, and then all the terms here that are multiplied by delta r, and then this is some term uh, that's not proportional to either of them. And so um, now we can look at the how this affects the yaw stability derivative, which is cn beta, which is everything that is proportional to beta. Um, so the derivative of, of this equation uh, with respect to beta is just that first term there. So we'd have eta sub v times our tail, tail volume ratio, which is SVLV over SWBW times CLV alpha, one minus epsilon S beta. Okay, so that's our, that's our influence of the vertical tail on the uh, yaw stability derivative. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a really important equation here. This is how we can estimate the uh, uh, the, our yaw stability derivative. This is the largest contributor to our yaw stability derivative. This is the, the contribution from the vertical tail. And then uh, this term right here uh, is called uh, Cn delta r. This is our change in yawing moment with respect to delta r. This is also an important term. 
because this is a control derivative. So uh, we can estimate how much radi or how much rudder deflection we're going to need to uh, produce a certain yawing moment coefficient uh, about the center of gravity. So that's what this this is a control derivative, the rudder control derivative, in fact. Okay, so um, now before we move on, I just want to talk a little bit more about sidewash. So sidewash can come from a couple different things. Um, so here's uh, sidewash. So uh, one of those is if we look straight down the aircraft, and let's say that we're um, we're looking uh, at the nose of the aircraft, and, and then the tail is further into the page, um, then let's say we have a, a propeller on this and uh, we'll give it a let's we'll say it's a right-handed propeller so it's rotating that direction and then behind it we have a vertical tail back there so what happens is there's uh, from the propeller we're going to get some prop wash some swirling prop wash and so that so so that's one form of side wash that can be impinging on a vertical tail okay it's, it's just uh, the wash from the propeller um, as that slipstream moves downstream and, and hits that vertical tail. Now, sometimes we do this on purpose because it actually increases the dynamic pressure. And so our, our rudders can become more effective at lower speeds. And so a lot of times you'll see um, if you have a twin prop uh, aircraft, so here's a fuselage and then you have one propeller on this side and one propeller on this side, sometimes you'll see that they actually have vertical tails uh, back there in that prop wash um, and, and that's so that they can increase the dynamic pressure. So at low speeds at takeoff and landing, they have more rudder control because the dynamic pressure is higher there. Okay, but, uh, but you also have to be accounting for that side wash. And a lot of times they'll have counter rotating propellers, you know, something like this, uh, so that that side wash might kind of cancel out um, on the vertical tails, uh, you know, because you've got one on either side there. So another form of... of uh, of side wash is uh, let's say that this is our wing and this is our fuselage here and our horizontal tail and we've got some vertical tail back here okay um, and now let's say we have some beta so this is beta uh, coming in here this is v infinity uh, what happens is the wingtip vortices um, actually are uh, aligned basically with the free stream velocity so if we have some positive beta, then, uh, then, then our wingtip vortices are now going to shift relative to the vertical tail. And uh, so let's, let's look at the direction of rotation of this vortex system. So, uh, so this is the direction that each of these vortices would be, um, would be rotating. And so you can see if, if, this tail is, uh, if this tail is mounted above the main wing, then as we get positive beta, um, we're going to get some extra side wash on this side here because uh, as this tail moves closer to this vortex, uh, it, it will sense the influence of this vortex more than this vortex, right? And the, these influences drop off as, uh, what is it, 1 over r or 1 over r squared. So anyway, as we get closer, this vortex is now going to dominate the flow field that this vertical tail is seeing. And so it will be pushing, uh, it will induce some velocity, um, in this direction, uh, which actually is stabilizing. So, uh, so that will increase. So not only do we have, uh, do we have an increase in, in beta on this vertical tail due to our free stream velocity, but actually we have even more than that due to the influence of this vortex that will be pushing on the side of this. And this vortex here is obviously pushing on this side, but it's weakening as, as this vortex gets closer and this one gets further away. Uh, the left-hand side gets weaker. And obviously that would be the same if we went to the other side. And so this is a stabilizing um, uh, phenomenon here that we actually get more yaw stability than we would if we neglected this. You know, we could estimate the yaw stability just to, to, on the vertical tail just to a change in beta, but we actually get more than that because of this side wash here coming from this vortex. Now, the, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, if we had mounted our vertical tail below this vortex system. So let's say that this is uh, the plane of that vortex system and we had mounted um, our vertical tail below that. Well, now uh, this, this vortex on this side is, is still rotating in this direction, right? So it's, it's going around like this. 
but as it comes around, actually it's, uh, if it's below this, then it will actually induce a velocity that is, uh, that is uh, in this direction. Okay, and so that is counter, uh, that's working in the opposite direction of what beta is, is doing on this. And so that's actually reducing our yaw stability. Now it doesn't mean that our yaw stability is gonna be negative. Um, it, it, it depends on the ratio of this velocity to our, uh, to our beta, uh, our, our component from beta up here, but, um, but it will reduce yaw stability by having, by mounting this vertical stabilizer below this vortex system instead of above it. So usually we see this above and, and you know, one of the benefits is this increased yaw stability. Another benefit is tail strike on takeoff, right? So uh, when you take off, you have to rotate the aircraft. And so your tail uh, will often rotate down very close to the ground. And if you had your vertical tail sticking out the bottom uh, of the aircraft instead of up the top, then then you couldn't, uh, you couldn't handle as large of a rotation angle. So there are a couple of reasons to have your vertical tail up above the, um, uh, basically the, the wing tips here. But, um, uh, but anyway, this is one of the benefits. And, but, but you may not always be able to do this. You know, if you have a high wing aircraft, uh, then, then you would need to pay attention to the location of this vertical tail relative to that main wing. Okay, so here we've talked about the influence of the vertical tail. This is the largest influence we have on yaw stability and trim. And uh, now we're going to go into uh, other things that also influence it that we should not neglect during the initial stages of design.